Hi there, and welcome to another video of TechCat. Today we're looking at an HP MediaSmart EX490, a media server I was able to pick up for only 10 euros. Inside the advertisement, you can see that he thinks he put an E8400 CPU in there and that he modded a VGA cable on the motherboard. Well, let's have a look. The server has a dual-core E5200 2.5GHz processor, 2GB of DDR2 memory and a network connection speed of 1GB. The server has 4 brackets which can all house a 3.5 inch hard drive. I'm planning on placing the Western Digital Black drives of 2TB in there 4 times creating a total of 8TB of storage. The drives are just something that I had laying around, therefore you can see they're from 2013 not really recommendable. As you can see in the back, there has been done a beautiful modification of destroying the case, jamming a VGA cable through it, but at least we do have display output. It's the back. We're not going to see it. Yeah, can't really say anything positive about it, except it works. So, so be it. Booting up the server just shows a display output for the VGA. It shows you the default output you would say for a machine that has no operating system. And at least we know it works. So now we can install Debian 11 on it. I'm planning on installing Debian 11 with Casa OS, mainly because I like the way Casa OS works. Uh, you can install apps and such, and yeah, just works uh, like a charm. I'm not walking you guys through the installation process, but if you do want to see this in another video, please do let me know in the comments below. Now, Debian 11 has been set up. I've enabled SSH access, and now we're gonna connect to the server, see what hardware is in it, if we can actually detect the drives as well, and then move on further to install Casa OS. I'm using Putty, an application that is available on Windows and other systems as well to enable an easier console for the SSH access. Logging in goes easy with the user I've set up. When running Debian, I always like to make sure that I'm running the latest updates and therefore I'm making sure that these are indeed installed. And as you can see here, you can see that we can indeed detect the drives. And let's move on forward to uh, install Casa OS. As the performance isn't really amazing of this machine, I have indeed uh, sped up the process to ensure that it shows a, a quicker overview. Now that the installation is done, we can access Casa OS for the browser on the IP of the server, as you can see that I'm doing here. Creating my first user here with both passwords, well, not both passwords, with the password of course. And then we're moving on to Casa OS. Here you can see that I'm adding the disks to become actually storage as well in Casa OS. Just having the disks in there doesn't make them automatically storage, so you do indeed have to add them as storage. After what you can do is merge the storage. This is in beta, so I'd not, well, I wouldn't recommend it. Casa OS doesn't have any support for RAID yet, but this is something that might come in the future. So uh, yeah, let's move on forward with the creation of the storage. As you can see here, I switched one two terabyte drive for a 60 gigabyte SSD. This was uh, something that I actually recommend running the operating system from an SSD that makes it a lot snappier. Now let's install some apps from the included app store. We're gonna install Nextcloud and Edgard Home as I'm planning on using these both. And maybe we can install some additional applications in the future, something like a Home Assistant or Jellyfish, but We'll have a look.
When doing the installation, you do see actually that the CPU isn't that good as it's reaching about 80% of usage. Memory is okay though with two gigabytes, but CPU is having a bit of a hard time, but for now it's okay. Now that we've installed both apps, let's have a look at Nextcloud. First time launching the app, it can happen that you need to click on the, the little link below before it actually functions, but hey, in the end it does function of course. Casa OS is basically a kind of a GUI layover for people that don't really want to use that much Linux commands and such and, and rather install it for a GUI. Casa OS is installing Docker containers in the background, meaning that the yeah, and in the end, uh, you will have all the applications running in quite an easy and up-to-date method. Setting up Nextcloud is quite easy. And then after that, we can just see uh, for what else we're going to use this machine. I hope you all enjoyed the video and can maybe give it a like or subscribe just see whatever you would like and uh, if you would like to see videos like this in the future please do let me know and uh, for now all have an amazing day